Ladies and gents, welcome to TFI, and boy, oh boy, am I excited for this one. This one's going to be a good one. Right, the last couple of vids that I've done on the channel, which if you haven't seen, go and check out the back catalog, and whilst you're there, hit that subscribe button underneath if you haven't done already. It's free, and you'll get all vid notifications from this point on that come out of my channel. But those videos that I've done in the past, in the past couple of days anyway, they've shown a number of advanced techniques for creating things like entities which are going to be included in a DXF for laser etched text and I thought that technique or those techniques could be used for things like images and logos to be stamped or etched in sheet metal. It's not all that easy to do, it's not all that straightforward so I thought I'll do a video on its own showing you how to do that and I'm using the Corsair logo which is a pretty, it's a pretty I would say generic looking logo. It's common as to what I think would be typical for laser etch imagery and it's a, it's a good logo to go with so i'm going to be using this logo just a couple of disclaimers before we get going though if you're going for a completely different image which it might be the busier the image the more detail that's in the image the more color that's in the image and also the lower quality that the image might be you're going to get massively different results throughout this process and you might well you, you're definitely going to have to put a lot more work into getting the image tidied up to get it etched into the metal so I'm just going to be just warning you, just warning you, because this image that I'm using is pretty simple and straightforward, but other images' results may vary. Finally, final disclaimer, cards on the table, I'm using Adobe Illustrator in this process, so you're going to need to have access to Illustrator or another program which does what I'm doing in Illustrator. I'm not aware of any of the programs that do what I'm doing, and my skills in Illustrator extend only as far as what I'm doing. I've never used Illustrator before today, so I don't know of any other programs that do what I do in here. Someone in the comments might let you know, though. But if you need to do this for work, your company shouldn't have a problem with just subscribing to Illustrator. It's not that expensive if you need to do this for work. Right, let's get cracking. So in Google Images, all I did was Google Corsair logo PNG. The first hit that came up is a nice quality Corsair logo with a transparent background. Right click on that image and then go save image as and then drop that on the desktop and that'll save it out as a PNG file. The next thing I'm going to do is hop over to Illustrator. I might be doing this the complete wrong way, but I do know that this works. Someone in the comments might say, no, there's a better way of doing this for better results. By all means, just put that out there and then check the comments to see if someone has actually put that out there. Hit start new and I'm going to be creating a brand new generic poster template, which creates a white bit of paper, which uh, I'm going to stamp the logo in there. But before I do that, we're going to go file and open and then select the Corsair logo that you've saved as from the internet and then hold the left mouse button down on the logo and then drag it into this brand new template. Let go of the mouse button and then it drops it into that poster template. The command that we use for this, I've no idea what it does. <laughs> no idea. But all the tutorials that I've seen say use high fidelity photo. But I'm thinking that that might create a few too many entities that we then we need. So I'm going for silhouettes. So image trace and then silhouettes. Once it's done that, hit expand and you can see it's exploded the outline of the image and the text as vector entities and i'm hoping that using silhouettes has made it a little bit more simplified than you would do otherwise if you used a high fidelity photo once that's done go file export and then export as and it's going to export it as an autocad ddwg which is brilliant because inventor imports ddwg files natively so we don't have to do any carry on and any jiggery pokery after we've exported from illustrator so we hit export to the desktop and then for the export options, I'm just accepting the defaults. I have no idea what any of these do, if I'm honest. Preserve appearance, true color PNG. I mean, the AutoCAD version is, I'm just using the latest one, and then hit OK. And that saves that out to a DWG on the desktop. OK, over to Inventor. I'm stamping this image onto a flat bit of metal. It is just a simple 2 mil thick flat bit of metal, and I don't know what the dimensions are. It's just a square bit of metal. The size and the dimensions don't actually matter. The first step is to float a sketch off the top face of the metal. Doesn't matter how high as long as it's away from the face. I'm going to put 200 mil in there. But you can't sketch on the face. It has to be floated off the top of the face. Once you've activated that sketch and you're in the sketch environment, we're going to go to insert a CAD file. And we're going to go to the desktop and then select that logo which you've exported from Illustrator and then click open. And then this is where Inventor starts throwing a tantrum hissy fit and it starts bombarding you with prompts. It starts being a right royal dickhole about it and throws them behind the bloody program window. Cheers for that Autodesk. And click OK. And then just click continue on the next prompt. And then it gives you the ACAD import window where it says, right, out of your AutoCAD file, which entities do you want to import? But for this one, we're going to select them all. And I'm going to tick AutoCAD blocks to Inventor blocks, and we're ticking constraint endpoints as well. 
the imported file units doesn't matter hit finish and that converts your illustrated output into an inventor block which looks pretty tasty i'm liking the look of that that's coming pretty good it's coming pretty good over on the left hand side in the browser you've got a blocks folder now and in the blocks folder there's a bunch of hatch blocks which it's made we're going to select all of those multi multi select with shift and then right click and delete get rid of all of them we don't want them that leaves us with block two which is the main bulk of this uh, corsair logo and because we've ticked make an inventor block it's brought it in as one selectable entity which we can just drag around rather than it being hundreds and thousands of different line entities double click block two and what we need to do is just double check that the logo is coming okay and there's no funky overlaps or squidgy edges because some logos that are of a low pixelated quality when it did the trace you could end up with some funky overlaps which is just going to fail when you try to do the next step so just have a quick scan around it make sure that there's no overlaps there's no holes in it or anything like that but it's looking pretty solid actually it's done a jolly good job of converting that into closed loop profiles the the r's a bit funky but it's fine to be honest we're just we're just etching it into metal so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect but that's looking good right the next step is a bit of a ball ache it's a bit fiddly but it's got to be done what we have to do is turn off these construction lines these are the spline handles for the closed loop splines so to do that you've got to select the spline itself right click and then untick polygon visibility and that turns off the spline line you can do this by multi-selecting pick the the spline line hold down shift and then just go around picking all the other ones hold down shift pick these and unfortunately as uh, time consuming and annoying as this is i've got to do it for every other spline in the sketch but it's not a big deal because once it's done you just do it once and then it's done so I'm not too fussed. It's worth investing the time. And uh, we're nearly there. We've got the R and then we've got the O. Note as well that some of these text entities have two profiles, uh, the outer island and the inner island. So we're going to have to pay attention to those later on. I've already done that one right. So then you right click and then untick polygon visibility. Uh, if you don't see polygon visibility on the right click menu, it will be because you've accidentally selected one of the spline handles as you were clicking through all the, the other things so you just have to go and do it again right that's it done the next thing i need to do i'm just going to click finish block but you can see the logo is way too big to fit on the metal so we need to scale this down double click into the block select scale put a window around the logo and then for the base point select anywhere and i'm going to scale this down to 0 0.1 Let's see if that works 0 0.1 finish the block and we can move that out of the metal and yeah, that's a good size. That is a pretty good size. I'm happy with that. In terms of placement, right, let's just look at that work plane. In terms of placement, if I was doing this in production, I would create a bounding rectangle around the Corsair logo and then use the center point of the rectangle to centralize it on the metal. But I'm not fussed about that. As long as it looks central in this demo, that's all I really care about. So it's, it's looking good there. Right, next I'm going to turn off this work plane. Just right click on that and then turn the visibility of the work plane off. And the next step is where we start to get into the advanced techniques. If, if what we haven't done already <laughs> isn't advanced. So we're going to select start 2D sketch. We're going to select the drop down arrow and we're going to start a 3D sketch. And we're using projector surface. This takes entities and projects them down onto a solid face as 3D sketch entities. Yeah, it's, it sounds funky and it kind of is, but it's pretty impressive when you see it work. So we're going to select project to surface. The faces we're going to project to is going to be this top face of the metal. Then we're going to look straight down on the logo, select the curves arrow, and then put a window around the Corsair logo. For the direction, you want to select that arrow, and then you want to pick the face you're projecting onto. And then you see this little yellow axis here, it detects the direction and the tra trajectory of the logo straight down onto the face. Click OK and that burns the Corsair logo straight down onto the metal using uh, it, it, the adaptive lines as well. So if the logo was to change or move, then these yellow lines will move with them. And it's the yellow lines that we're, that we're using for the next step rather than the original image, which has been imported. Click Finish Sketch, and then for this Sketch 3 here, which is the imported sketch block, we can right-click on that and then turn it off because we're only interested now in using this. This is the final step. You want to select the 3D model tab on the ribbon bar, and then you want to select split. We're using the 3D sketch to split the top face of the metal. So these are all closed loop profiles. So for the split tool, you want to select that, and then for the face, you want to select that. We're using that logo to split this face. Click apply, and then click cancel. And it's used the Corsair logo to create a split face region. It's a region on the metal. 
but where's the rest of the bloody logo gone? <laughs> well, it's Inventor's assuming you've done with the logo now and it's just turned it off. So we're going to expand split one, right click on sketch one, and then share the sketch. That lets us reuse it again for future splits. And we've got a few more to do. So select split again. And we're going to select this top sail here on the Corsair logo and then split that face, that and then that. And then we're just going to repeat this all the way through the Corsair logo. But there's a couple of anomalies, right? The C's all right. We're going to split the face using the C. Now, whenever you've got text or anything for that matter, which is a face within a face, right? You see this one here? This is an island within this one here. If you were to split the outer face first and then try and split the inner face second, it's going to fail. I'll show you. Watch this. So you're going to select the outside face using the outer island of the O. And then we're going to split that set that section to that face there and it's going to fail i don't know why can't explain why someone from autodesk watch these videos they, someone might be able to chip in and, and tell you exactly you know, what mathematical modeling engine kernel reason there is for it failing i don't know why but it just does so the way to get around that is always go from the inside out so select the inner face first and then split that face with the inner island of the o and then then split using the outer face and then that gives you the profile for the o it works when you go out uh, inside out for some reason i don't know why all right carry on r the r's done s let's split the face with the s same with the a split the inner island first and then use the outer profile of the a and then the i and the r are pretty straightforward it's as you were uh, for those ones and then for the little registered trademark same again the r is going to be first inside out and then select that one and then select the outer one split 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 you should end with 15 splits if you're following me all right once that's done right click on 3d sketch and then turn the visibility of that off and then there you go you have your corsair logo etched into your metal and it's looking absolutely spiffing if i do say so myself to finish this off if you want to make it stand out for visualization purposes you can hold down control and then just select all the profiles so just go around select all of these uh, just you have to be careful it does jump around a little bit to make sure you're picking the right ones and the inner R and then that one there right click on those go to properties and then you can change them with a different color and let's be uh, let's be imaginative with this let's make it dark gray that's that's really imaginative that hasn't changed at all that was possibly the worst color I could have picked oh hang on a minute no it's just updated wait okay delay much and there you go there's your Corsair logo etched into the the metal now you might be thinking i don't know who you are what your knowledge is on inventor but you might be sat there thinking surely you could have just stamped the picture onto the metal well yes mate yes you could have but when you do a dxf output it won't include the image in the dxf that's why we're doing this so we're in sheet metal still so select the sheet metal tab pick that top face and then select create flat pattern then select real well, right click on your flat pattern browser node go to save copy as and then select dxf desktop and then i don't know metal i already had metal there and then metal okay and that's outputted that as a DXF AutoCAD file, which you can't see. But let's open up AutoCAD, which hopefully should open up pretty quickly. Yes, it really did open that quickly. There was there was absolutely no video editing involved there whatsoever. My PC really is that fast. But there's the DXF. No, it's not. I need to change this to DXF. Uh, there it is, Metal DXF. And you should see you should see the Corsair logo etched into the DXF file along with the profile of the metal. And that's now available to be used and sent to whoever needs to receive it. And there you go, mate. There you go. That's how you take a picture, convert it into vector lines, and stamp it into your metal for etching. I think that's pretty mint. I think that's pretty awesome. So like I said at the very start of this video, the quality of the image will massively dictate the end result here and what you've got to do. If you do import a, a real complex image, when we were looking at the spline handles and all the, you know, the corners, you might have to do a lot of tidying up and deleting of of excess vector entities which come through uh, before it works and you, you'll have a lot more profiles to split as well if you were using a lot of, you know a busier image but who knows who knows it depends just give it a shot play with the options the import options play with the different types of uh, image tracing that you've got at your disposal in illustrator and then uh, you'll get there in the end it's uh, these things are never simple but uh, that's it for this one thanks very much so like i said at the start if you haven't subscribed already do hit that subscribe button man it's free what you gotta lose and i'll see you in the next one toodles